Hello, America. I'm Mark Levin, and this is Life, Liberty, and Levin Sunday. Welcome. Last night's program, I began what I call a two-part argument on why the Democrat Party is a totalitarian party, a party we've never really seen in the United States of America, not a typical American party. They've imported their ideas of Marxism, quasi-fascism, economic socialism, mostly from Europe, and in Europe, mostly from Germany. And that's what you're seeing today with Biden and Schumer and Hakeem Jeffries. That's what we saw with Nancy Pelosi, Barack Obama. That's what we see without our media. So it's not a normal political party in a democratic environment. It is an autocratic party. In fact, it is a totalitarian party. Now, as I said last night, their goal is to imprison Donald Trump. You don't bring 91 felonies in four different jurisdictions by Democrat prosecutors in mostly Democrat cities with Obama judges, Biden judges, or Democrat elected judges, if you don't mean to put somebody in prison. I don't mean just to indict them, just to convict them. You want to put that person in prison, and they want to do it fast. Why? They want to clear the field. What are you talking about, Mark? They actually want Joe Biden to run without a Republican opponent. Just as a scenario, if Donald Trump were convicted and sentenced and put in jail in November, God forbid, what would the Republicans do? How would they have a nominee? There's no convention. There's no process. Understand, America, this is what's going on. This is the logical procession of what they are trying to do. Clear the field. Eliminate the Republican nominee. That is what they've been doing now for over a year. That's why they have used the most pathetic, rogue, reprobate prosecutors in New York, in Atlanta, in Washington, that they could possibly come up with. And don't tell me it's not coordinated. Oh, it's just happenstance. We know it's coordinated. Joe Biden and his White House were involved in passing this on to the Justice Department at the federal level. Fannie Willis and her lover, one or both, have been in communication with the White House. The judge in the Manhattan case was in communication with the judge in the Washington case, but they don't even actually have to have their DNA and fingerprints all over the place. They watch the news. They know what the mission is. Joe Biden tells them, Donald Trump is Hitler. If he gets elected, by God, we'll lose our country. We'll lose, we'll lose our democracy. He'll imprison people. He must be stopped at all costs. Message received. So our justice system has been destroyed effectively. We have constitutional issues being litigated because the edge of the envelope is being pushed. Whether it's immunity, attorney-client privilege, whether it's the appellate processes, trying to bankrupt Trump, and so forth and so on. Well, this is the second half of the evidence that the Democrat Party is a totalitarian party. I could do a 10-part series, but I'm only going to do two. Chuck Schumer goes to the floor of the Senate this week. You've heard about it. Now, I'm going to respond to this because this is more evidence of what I'm talking about. Let's take a listen. Go. The fourth major obstacle to peace is Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu. As a lifelong supporter of Israel, it has become clear to me the Netanyahu coalition no longer fits the needs of Israel after October 7th. The world has changed radically since then, and the Israeli people are being stifled right now by a governing vision that is stuck in the past. Five months into this conflict, it is clear that Israelis need to take stock of the situation and ask, must we change course? At this critical juncture, I believe a new election is the only way to allow for a healthy and open decision-making process about the future of Israel. He says a lot more. We're not going to play it all. He tells the Israelis that if they don't have a form of coup or a new election to rid themselves of the current government, which they elected, that once this war is over, the United States will take over and will re-engineer the Middle East and determine what the Middle East will look like. What he means by that is we will impose a two-state solution. As I speak, almost 80 percent of the Israelis oppose a two-state solution for obvious reasons that all of us know. You will have an Iranian client state. They'll have access to missiles. They'll have access to jet fighters. They'll have access to whatever they want. And nobody will stop them. Certainly not Biden and Schumer and Blinken. And here you have on the floor of the Senate, I must say, 
a Jewish senator who represents the largest population of Jews in the United States. What the hell is going on? You have a Secretary of State who was born Jewish. What the hell is going on? You have one of the most obsessed Israel haters at the New York Times, Thomas Friedman, born a Jew. And of course, you have the ownership of the New York Times, which was Jewish, and I think through intermarriage is Lutheran or something like that. Of course, it's not just them. Plenty of Gentiles involved. But I want to read something to you very quickly. Abandonment of the Jews, America and the Holocaust by David S. Wyman. David S. Wyman was a Christian who was appalled at what he saw at the New York Times and had the guts to call him out. The New York Times at the time was owned by the Schulzberger family, still is. These are people whose ancestry, German Jewish. But they were in the tank for Franklin Roosevelt. Franklin Roosevelt didn't want a lot of reporting about the Holocaust because he might actually have to do something about it. Worse, his State Department put caps on the amount of Jews who would be brought into the United States or could escape to the United States who were facing sure extermination. And that cap was way below the legal cap that Congress had set. Only about 200,000 Jews came to the United States during the course of the Holocaust when hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of thousands more were authorized by Congress. The State Department, the same State Department that Blinken runs, with Islamists and others in there, that State Department was loaded with anti-Semites. And Franklin Roosevelt knew it. And yet Franklin Roosevelt is the hero of the Democrat Party. He's Chuck Schumer's hero. He's Biden's Schumer hero. Everybody wants to be Franklin Roosevelt. Very interesting, isn't it? Here's what he says in the beginning of his book. Parts of this book are critical of the American Jewish leadership in the Holocaust era. The policies of Zionist leaders are particularly questioned, in part because their movement held the greatest potential for effective Jewish action. This criticism is made reluctantly, yet it must be included if the report is to be honest and objective. Several of those leaders have since criticized their own failures in the face of the catastrophe. What I'm doing tonight could be considered controversial and provocative. It's not intended to be. Just honest. Each of you have your own faith or not. Some of you are Catholic, and you shake your head at what Biden does. He's the most aggressive, pro-abortion, anti-life president in our history. Yet he's Catholic. Same with Nancy Pelosi. What's that all about? And we can go down the list, right? Well, my theory is this. You can be born a Catholic, but it doesn't mean that you're a faithful practicing Catholic. You can be born a Jew and therefore ethnically a Jew, but you're not a religious Jew. And by that, I don't mean you have to be an Orthodox Jew. You don't really practice the faith, or maybe you show up at the high holidays and get a sugar cookie and some, you know, grape juice. But you're not really into the religion. And so you have these conflicts, whether it's the Catholic Church, other religions and faith, and in Judaism. So you can't paint with a broad brush. You have what I call the ethnic Jews, the Schumers. You have reprobates, Marxists, like Bernie Sanders, who actually under, undermines Judaism in the state of Israel. And then you have Jews who are both ethnic, born Jews, and are practicing Jews. The ethnic Jews, like Schumer, like Thomas Friedman at the New York Times, like Anthony Blinken at the State Department, despise the religious Jews. They despise the Orthodox Jews, the more conservative Jews, just like in Catholicism, and I'm not picking on any faith, I'm just giving it as an example, where the pro-abortion, anti-life radicals who are Catholic despise the preachings of the Catholic Church when it comes to abortion. That, in my view, is what's going on. Abandonment of the Jews is what you heard when Chuck Schumer took the floor of the United States Senate. He didn't say a word to Biden and his party that we shouldn't be funding Iran. They just sent them another $10 billion indirectly, but sent it to them the same day Chuck Schumer gets to the floor and trashes the Israeli government. Thomas Friedman has written so many articles trashing the Israeli government, trashing Benjamin Netanyahu, who he is uh, mentally unhinged and obsessed on the issue of Netanyahu, as he is with other Israelis who actually represent their people. But this is the New York Times. The Holocaust denying, the Holocaust covering up New York Times. 
that did it for politics, as it's doing today. Biden. Biden is no supporter of Israel. Biden supports Israel and prime ministers when they accede to his demands, when he can get them to come to him on bended knee. He did the same thing to Menachem Begin that he's doing to Bibi Netanyahu. Yet he kowtows to the leaders of Iran, the bloodthirsty murderers who are trying to build a nuclear weapon, and they're going to build it, and they're going to have it, thanks to Biden and Blinken and Austin and the rest of this administration, because we're funding it. Iran has gotten more money directly and indirectly as a result of this administration's policies than Ukraine. Than Ukraine. We fight over 14 or $17 billion of military aid to Israel. He's given over $100 billion in aid to Iran. What have they done with it? They've built up their military and their armaments. They have funded Hamas, the Houthis, Hezbollah, the PLO. So Biden is funding terrorism. Biden is funding a regime that's building nuclear weapons while he's putting his foot on the throat of the Israeli people and the Israeli government. I don't care what he says in public. Do you know Israel's running out of bombs and ammunition? They're trying to, to husband them now in case they have to go to war with Hezbollah. What's that all about? That is slime. What this country, this administration is doing to Israel and the Israeli people. And when Schumer goes to the floor of the Senate and he's telling He's telling the Israeli people, I am directing you, as Biden has, as Harris has, as Blinken has, as Friedman has, to overthrow your government, to dislodge your commander in chief in the middle of a war they're winning. I am telling you, you do this. I'm telling you, you accept a two-state solution, whether you like it or not, or will impose it from afar. We are going to organize the Arab countries. They are. We are going to organize the European countries. They are against you, Israel, little tiny Israel, the only force that's defending the world from Iran and the, and the terrorists? That's exactly what they're doing. This isn't about Bibi Netanyahu. Anybody could be prime minister who stands up to this tyranny, and they'll still try to undermine them. That's the history. Abandonment of the Jews. Hitler's American friends, right here. The Third Reich, the ivory tower, what's going on in our colleges and universities. Buried by the times, Mr. Friedman, that's you. Beyond belief, Biden, Schumer, and all the rest of you, that's who you are. Never again, Jewish people used to say. But with people like Schumer and Blinken and Friedman, never again, it is again. It's today. The enemy is not Benjamin Netanyahu. The enemy is not the state of Israel. The Israeli people are not our enemy. They're our friends. They're allies. They have supported us every way as we have supported them. Iran is the enemy. Hamas is the enemy. The Houthis, Hezbollah, the terrorists are the enemy. And the Democrat Party is the enemy too. The enemy within here in the United States. They're trying to imprison Donald Trump and they're trying to push a coup in Israel because the Democrat Party doesn't believe in honest differences. The Democrat Party doesn't believe in real elections. The Democrat Party doesn't believe in the democratic system. The Democrat Party has turned autocratic, totalitarian. That's what it is. And so now their mission is to take out the two world leaders and would-be world leaders who they oppose. Not to try and defeat them honorably through an election, but destroy them. In Trump's case, bankrupt him. Have him defending himself in multiple courts on 91 phony charges hoping to put him in prison so Biden has a clear field and can't lose because the American people are turning on him. And Bibi Netanyahu, his policies have the massive support of a united Israel that's trying to protect itself and defend itself while it's surrounded. They're not interested in taking out their prime minister at the direction of Chuck Schumer. Chuck Schumer, who's elected a senator from New York, a Democrat state, and he's worried about AOC and his left-wing flank, and he will sell out the state of Israel for power. He will sell out the United States for power. The Democrat Party is about the Democrat Party. It's about power, power, and power. The Democrat Party has more in common with various communist and fascistic parties all over the world. That's the model. Threatening parents, threatening pro-lifers, threatening the Catholic Church, open borders to change the citizenry, they have their own state-run media at CNN and MSNBC, at the New York Times and the Washington Post. This is autocracy. This is tyranny. And so what Joe Biden 
has done to the United States, they are now trying to do to the state of Israel. And one friend of mine said to me the other day, it pays to be an enemy of Joe Biden, not an ally, when it comes to foreign policy. And they couldn't be more accurate. Chuck Schumer, you are a disgrace as an American. And I want the Israeli people to know, and every survey has shown it, the vast majority of the American people support you. Not the Democrat Party, not Biden, and not Schumer. They are trying to undermine you as they fund and empower the terrorists, the terrorists in Iran. I'll be right back. Hey, Sean Hannity here. Hey, click here to subscribe to Fox News' YouTube page and catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis. You will not get it anywhere else.